Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses, and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah! <laughs> Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and we've got a great episode of Guns N' Roses True Story today and this one comes to us courtesy of Reddit and this is why I like Reddit a bit. I'm not a huge fan of Reddit, I find it a bit pretentious but sometimes they do have some good stories. Now this was posted earlier in the year so a person on Reddit posted some photos of the time that Axl Rose of Guns N' Roses landed on the street in front of his grandpa's house in a hot air balloon. So the event took place in 1991 in Salt Lake City, Utah, and most likely happened around the time that Guns N' Roses played a show there on July 13th, 1991. Now what's funny is that Axl Rose apparently wasn't happy with the crowd at the Utah show, and at the band's next show in Tacoma, Washington, he kept referring to how much the crowd sucked in Salt Lake City. So these are some of the photos that you guys can see that um, this kid's uh, grandparents took. So the kid said he wasn't there when this happened, but he went upstairs to his grandparents' attic and he came across these photos, of course, which you know Guns N' Roses fan had, Guns N' Roses fans had never seen before. Now, one of my favorite parts of this post on Reddit is that somebody uh, commented on the date. They, he said, date checks out. He's wearing his Axel Converse high tops. And as we all know, he didn't lose those until 1993 during his freak oil tanker accident and subsequent rescue by a friendly pot of dolphins. According to the poster, he gave some more back uh, around on the actual event. He said, it's really simple and as insane as it sounds. The hot air balloon had trouble or something like that and had to land and it just happened to land on my grandpa's street. I've had the picture of Axel for a while, but without the context. It's just a picture of Axel. We found the rest of the photos cleaning out the house this week. Now, there are some reviews from that Salt Lake City show from 1991. There's two reviews. Uh, one is from the Salt Lake City Tribune, and the other one is like a shorter version of the Salt Lake City Tribune. So the first article says the Guns N' Roses concert passes without problems. So this was shortly after the St. Louis riot, which happened a couple weeks prior. So according to the article, a beefed up security force was on hand as the heavy metal rock band Guns N' Roses took to the stage at Salt Lake pa at the Salt Palace Saturday evening, but the concert passed without violence. It's kind of funny when people refer to Guns N' Roses as heavy metal because they're really not heavy metal. Outside Accord Arena, security guards searched through good purses and checked concert goers as they entered the building. Inside, a heavy stream of security guards and ushers patrolled aisles and watched the band. Usually there are about 40 ushers for concerts, but there were more than 75 on hand for the rock concert. An increased force of Salt Lake police officers also patrolled outside of Salt Palace. Security was increased after a riot broke out at a recent Guns N' Roses concert in St. Louis, where more than 60 people were injured after lead singer Axl Rose leaped into an audience when a fan began taking pictures. Security guards passed out handbills um, where, uh, warning concert goers against taking cameras, lighters, and alcohol into the arena, and handbills also advised fans to stay in their seats and not to stand in aisles. So the actual review for the show said that Guns N' Roses goes off unexplosively. Saying he wanted to leave before I put anyone else to sleep, singer W. Axl Rose put a rather odd and uneventful end to the Ballyboo Guns N' Roses concert at the Salt Palace. So fans cursed and booed as security personnel worked quietly to move disappointed concert goers out of the arena after the performance by ill-reputed rock and roll band. After a two-hour show, the abrupt close came as a relief to the anxious Salt Lake authorities who kept a close watch on Guns N' Roses after a riot broke out during the group's performance two weeks ago in Missouri. An enthusiastic crowd of nearly 12,000 filled the Salt Palace Arena to see what was billed as one of the summer's biggest concert acts. An increased security staff of over 200 patrolled the aisles of the arena, doing everything from extinguishing cigarettes to making sure fans uh, who tried to edge closer to the stage returned to their assigned seats. The cautious setting, uh, which included a, cast, a cattle guard and fencing set up coincidentally in preparation for Days of uh, 47 Rodeo and a raucous enthusiasm of fans made for an interesting combination. Expectations for the concert ran high because the band, whose members are notorious for playing great rock and roll as they are for their antics, had not performed in Salt Lake City since they opened for Iron Maiden three years ago. So local groupies were in full force on the night of the show. Young women clad in form-fitting black attire clamored for coveted backstage passes that the group's manager handed out during the break between Skid Row's opening act and Guns N' Roses' performance. They've said they, uh, they said that we weren't dressed right, said one of the 25-year-old women who requested to meet the band was declined. I guess they wanted somebody sleazier. At the center of all the attention was the heat-seeking Mr. Rose, whose stage manner, despite his reputation as a rabble-rouser, proved to be tame. He screamed only a few expletives in between uh, song chatter and was in mild in comparison to Skid Rose lead singer Sebastian Bach. 
Mr. Bach may have been trying to push the limits of freedom of speech since he was cited for lewdness over comments he made in his last appearance in Utah. Mr. Rowe's traditionally questionable stage antics were also held in check. He made his social and political statements through a number of costume changes that included a coat made in the form of the American flag, a Scottish kilt, and baseball catcher's chest protector. So about two years later, Guns N' Roses would return to Salt Lake City during the Skin and Bones tour. And this was an article that talked a bit about the preview for the actual concert. So it's kind of crazy. Tickets were $22 in advance at all Smith Tickets outlets and $24 at the Delta Closer Center box office the day of the show. So the show was scheduled to take place at 7.30 and Blind Melon was opening for Guns N' Roses. So there was rumors abounded that the wedding scene in the part of the November Rain video featuring Rose and Model uh, slash companion Stephanie Seymour was footage of the couple's real ceremony at the time. But of course, by the time Guns N' Roses came to Salt Lake City, him and Stephanie Seymour were broken up. So Rose quelled these rumors last month by publicly announcing that the relationship is over and that I think I've found somebody I can be happy with. The latest rumors say that the new woman hails from the small southern town and Surprise is not a model. So after finishing up the Skin and Bones tour later this month, both Guns N' Roses and Ice-T camps have hinted at a doubling up for a rock and roll, rock and rap bill, which of course never ended up materializing. So that's just a short little true story I want to share with you guys. I'm sure these photos are pretty rare, at least when it comes to the Guns N' Roses fan base. So thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. And be sure to follow me on GNRcentral.com for the latest and greatest Guns N' Roses news. Please make sure you guys subscribe if you want to also stay up to date on all the GNR news and see more true story episodes just like this. Thanks for watching, guys, and have yourself a good one.